So welcome, dear friends. And uh, please feel invited to be with us here in the meditation hall. Some of you know the place, some others not. But now we are all together in this meditation hall. It's a very, very particular situation. Normally, uh, we are together with a certain number of people, at the maximum 40, and I do see them. But now we have expanded. It's a new, absolutely new situation. The meditation hall has expanded, become bigger. And all of you, wherever you are, wherever you happen to be now, are with me and with everybody else in the meditation hall. Wherever you are, you now have a place in a meditation hall. So I first invite you to get the feeling of this special moment that where you are sitting now, you are aware that you will listen to a Dharma talk. Not something, but a Dharma talk. So please prepare yourself with your body posture into a kind of a, a posture where you can listen and get a feel of that being together as a huge group, but still united. So, though we are not together here on one spot, we are still connected by our intention. We remain to be an intentional community, though we are not a community in its proper sense, in this, let's say, conventional sense. We are united, and what holds us together is our intention. That's now where we focus on our intention. Intention means that is something which is on our heart, which gives us the strength to do something, which gives us a perspective. That is our intention. And as we are not a community in its uh, traditional way, we are now basically an intentional community. And so I like to share with you my, my intention. And uh, you might join in. Some of you know that already, the certain sentence I will read to you. And I have uh, adapted that a little bit. Hmm. So our intent is to enhance, to broaden our mind up to the next level of the development of a human consciousness. So, to have a mind which can live in this often violent world with clarity and wisdom. And this with a heart that is undefended and open to all beings. And if we have that mind, and please, if we have that mind, all habit of sorting and judging ceases. It's very important 
that we have this intention to lift our mind up. And as I said to the most probably next level of consciousness, of awareness, there might be another one, but for us it's the next one. And only then, if we have uh, this mind realized somehow, the judging, the comparing is ceasing or is ceased. People do get the impression that by the mind they have now, they should do everything to stop judging and comparing and ceasing. This is not possible. The mind we have so far is a very special mental structure. This mental structure is aimed, has the intention to secure our survival. It's the survival mode mind. The whole mental structure has at its core the body to support the body, to maintain and to sustain the body. And so the main energy is that of a egocentric uh, structure. And it's uh, fear driven. We are afraid of to die, to be hungry, to be excluded. That is the mind we live in now, and this mind has to judge, to compare, and so on and so on. Well, this mind has developed over many, many thousands, hundred thousand, maybe millions of years, I don't know, since humanity has begun. And at a certain point in our development, we got a mission, a mission, a kind of a assignment as human beings, a kind of a duty. And I read to you, and you would uh, remember that is uh, what we are here for. Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. That's what we have done, isn't it so? We are really obedient and we are smart and we have done that. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. We have done that. We have done that smartly, and we have then have done that totally. Is it so? And God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth, and every tree that has fruit with seed in it, they will be used for food. And we have done that. We have gotten the assignment, and for hundred thousand of years, we have done our best, and we have fulfilled the duty so far. But now we do realize that uh, it's uh, enough. We have fulfilled our assignment. We are even on a turning point. So far this world, this planet Earth is now filled with human beings. And we are those who kind of govern the world. And but now we start realizing something goes over the top. And that gives us another fear. 
it's not that we now off the fear that we have fulfilled our duty and have done what we should have done. Now there is even more fear. How should that go on if it's go on like that? Now we are in a very, very crucial situation as human beings. Those who um, govern the fate of this planet. And we have two options. One option, if we go on, this whole thing collapses. We don't know uh, when, but uh, not too long. We are kind of doing our best to destroy everything. That's one option. And the other option is stop doing it. Step back. Begin to halt in a certain way. Have a look how we can change that whole development. If we look at the situation now, it is not quite quite clear yet to what humankind will decide. There is a kind of a dispute. The majority is still going on. They like to go on the way they have uh, grown so far and are used to do that. But especially in this time, I hear so often saying, now it will be different. This time is a time of remembering, of being insightful that we have to change. I don't know. But we can decide. There's still one kind of a danger, so to say. We are part of a whole energy field. And we are still, to the majority, a part of that survival mind. And we are still prone to fear. We are still prone to behave as we have behaved so far. And there is still this kind of uh, fear-driven uh, intention. And what I observe is that with a good will, but with the same kind of fear, we try to change. We are afraid of extinction. We are afraid that it's going on. But that is the same mind. We are still in the mind of being afraid. And as long as we are in that kind of a mind, we will not come to clear decisions. Because these decisions come out of the same mind. Einstein has made it so wonderful clear. The problem now cannot be changed by the same mind who has created the problem. That is what I observe, even with goodwill, and especially in so-called spiritual places, it's anxiety-driven. There is a kind of a survival mode and the anxiety, how will it go on? What can we do? So we need to touch on a different mind. We cannot go on with that mind, which is the same mind who has done the whole thing. So I read to you an insight by Thai. 
And I love uh, that book he has written, 1973. So it was the first book ever published. And it's called Zen Keys. That is his basic vision. And somehow I still see his vision. And he asked, the problem that faces us is a problem of awakening. What we lack is not an ideology or a doctrine that will save the world. That is what we are doing. But he says, what we lack is an awareness of what we are, of what our true situation really is. Through this awakening, we will rediscover our human serenity. Awakening can restore our spiritual force. So it's a different level, isn't it? It's something totally different. It's something saying, wait a minute, step back. Don't jump in front because that jumping comes out of the old mind. And however hard it is for many of us, we have to give us the space and the time, the opportunity and the circumstances for awakening. Now, awakening is like seeing. You see, if we, if you awake, if you wake up from a dream, you have a different perspective. You see, you don't dream. And again, there is a warning. For most of us, seeing means to find out. We have a perspective, we have a problem, and now we like to see. We like to find out what to do. But this is not seeing. It has a, already a kind of an approach. You have already a kind of an idea what to do and where to go. And then you only find the means. You only look for the tools to be able to go that path. That is not seeing. Seeing is uh, being absolutely open. Just kind of halting, so to say. A Korean master gave uh, his disciple a very simple uh, mantra. And that is uh, fitting to that. And the mantra was, don't know. It's not a negative thing. It's just this kind of an openness. And we are somehow running into the same situation that we try to find the next goal, to find the next step, and to find what we need to do. That is not awakening. That is not seeing. So what Thai has invited us to do is to slow down, almost to stop, to see, to see what is around us, what is in us. And this slowing down is not a tool, you know, it's not a new trick. It's not something now we do because we copy something. 
it is giving us the time and the space to see. If you run, you don't see. You just see where you run to. And the faster you run, the less you see. Circumstances, situation just to flow by. And you have that normal, narrow view of, to the goal you're running to. Running is the biological way of flight. There is a danger and you get off. That's running. So if we understand that, then we understand why Thai is constantly asking us, slow. You might even stop to see. And so the practice, our practice is, and that's the beginning of the practice, to slow down, to give us time, space and time to see. It is not easy for a good Western person. We are so trained to run because we are constantly in a survival mode. There's constantly something we have to be, we have to go to, we have to go for. And so not to do that is extremely difficult. Though, it's especially in this time, we understand that it gives us a different perspective already when we are more quiet, when we are maybe even still. But it's difficult. As I said already, we are afraid not to be engaged. We are afraid not to do. We are deeply afraid to be. And we are not even don't know what that is to be. And we just translate it as being lazy, not being a good member of society if we are not up in front and do something. So for many people to hear practice, our practice is almost something which means not doing. It's uh, not, not understood. When I read to remarks and questions, I do hear we need to do. Practice is something with which we achieve. Practice means, as a proper spiritual person, to be different, to be better, to be something we have not been so far, which we want to achieve by the practice. And we dream of, if we practice really hard, one day we realize, let's say, unconditioned love. That's what we're here for. That's what the practice is for. Please give me some information and some guided meditation that I can just jump over to that. Don't give me a time, you know. And so practice means to achieve, to be sometimes full, you know. Many practitioners kind of feed on the Dharma. Whatever is uh, um, offered, they get it. Like the same greedy mind we have is, uh, so far, you know. 
So people are not uh, greedy of repetition and money. Now they are greedy on enlightenment and uh, unconditioned love and all this kind of thing. That's not the practice. That's not practice at all. And it's something I remind us. Just give yourself the time. Give yourself the time to see, to even wait, because we can't see yet. Our mind is still clouded. The other day I spoke to someone who is in a same kind of a situation as we are, running a big meditation and retreat center. And he told me all his worries and anxieties and money problems and so on and so on. And after quite a while, he asked me, and Carl, what are you doing? And I said, nothing. I wait. And he, he kind of uh, laughed and said, <laughs> so. He didn't get what I'm saying. So, I wait. But I don't wait for another better situation, for something which might evolve and then I jump on the train. I just need to give myself the time to let the anxiety slow down. I still have the same mind to a certain extent. I still start having fantasies what to do to survive. And that is not of any help. It is not seeing. It is still the old mind to find out. That's what we are here for. That is uh, what we are um, well, inspiring or inspired. So far, when we, or when I talk about seeing, it is seeing what you haven't seen before. It's not only that the mind now is more available to whatever is around. It is clear. That is a kind of a wisdom part of the mind. Recognition, undiscriminative recognition, and so on and so on. But you all remember that in Buddhism, Wisdom goes and has to go together with compassion. Or put it the other way, way around, as I said in our intention, it's a mind and the heart. So if we see properly, something evolves in us, something is... Uh, getting a life, at least in myself, and I see it in others too. And I just don't call it compassion. I just call it care. You know what that is? Care? When you see, when you really properly see, without any having a, a uh, glasses, if you are open, you see what needs to be done. But it's not something which needs to be done. It has this kind of an emotion which I call care. You know what I mean? You might sit at the breakfast and your gaze just bounces up 
to have blossom in front of you. And you see it kind of uh, lets the head a little bit hang. And you know it needs water. And you get up and give it water. That's care. This care only comes when you see. And I observe so, so many people, they don't see. <laughs> they don't see that this uh, plant needs water. It's not that there is no care. They don't see. Because first you need to see. And then care comes. If it's a proper care. If it's not something you have been trained, you know, to have a clean room or whatsoever. If you, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a different mind which just cares, sees and cares. You see, in these days, uh, often in an ant, you know, these little ants, you know, just kind of um, finds uh, or its way into our kitchen. It's a, it has been brought by uh, uh, the sleeves or uh, the trousers, you know, not knowing where it has to, to find itself. And then I have to look down and say, hey, what are you doing here? And she looks up and said, I don't know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> someone has brought me here, you know, and it's a kind of a weird place, you know, I've never been like that, you know, this slippy, slippery floor and so on. And so I kneel down, just kind of natural. I kneel down, get a little bit of cloth and get this ant and get up and give it a chance to get out. And when I kind of uh, wiggle the cloth, I have a look whether this art is, art is dropping down. And maybe I have the fantasy that it looks up and says, thank you. That's care. Care, uh, the philosopher Martin Heidegger has once said, care, is the center energy of the universe. So we have both together, the mind which has clarity and the heart which is kind of a caring. I often quote Chögyam Trungpa and he had found for this Care, a wonderful term, a soft spot. It is a soft spot. It's a kind of a emotion. And that soft spot is something many people don't like that. It is this kind of being friendly and you don't know why. It is this kind of a, a feeling tone you may not like. And it has this kind of straightness, of clarity. That's the same thing, a soft spot. So we are invited to go all this way along, be aware that we are still basically stuck in our survival mode. But that we have to be very, very careful not to be drawn away by that. It's where we are at, but we can change. We can decide to do things differently, but it's not a kind of a social political action now because that is the same mind. That is what Thai has remind, reminded us. First, there need to be 
an awakening. First, there need to be seeing, a recognition. And to me, I'm adding to that, then the normal natural step is care. Responsibility in its kind of a feeling energy. Most of you know that I love a very specific Italian expression, which is just that. Ti voglio bene. That's all. That's also almost the, the cream of the practice. But please be careful. It has to stay on seeing, on clarity of the mind. It has not to be a kind of a uh, emotional something. It could even be a clear instruction. That is my expression of ti voglio bene. So let us finish with some minutes to remember our practice. Just for a minute, just let everything you have heard gone. Let it kind of settle. You might adjust your position again, that you're sitting straight, upright, in dignity. And you bring your awareness first of all to your body. The body is here, where you are. The body has been all the time now being patient to sit like that. And because we are aware of the body, the mind is connected to its object, the body. And so it lets go of all these worries and anxieties and thoughts and judgments only then when body and mind are united. Then we are really a proper human being. We are totally there where we are. That is our practice. So let us give some moments to sit like that, upright, with a feeling, an experience of being present, just there. And we'll finish off with the three sounds of the bell.
So thank you, thank you for being together. And it it may, might be my bit of a fantasy, but I had the impression you all had been present. You all had listened, but listened with your heart, with an understanding, yes. That's what we need to do. That is what we need to be aware of. And if that is something which I could have inspired you to, you will bring that into your daily life. There are so many situations where we can just for some minutes practice that way. Empty the mind reuniting body and mind and being there where we are, fully present as a human being. Thank you. <laughs>